IPC is tricky. It's really anything but a perfect science, or even really a science at all at this point. In fact, what most people informally call IPC often refers to single-threaded performance, or same clock speed performance in a specific app, or maybe type of apps. Indeed, most of the time, people are really talking about performance per clock in a specific set of apps, and it's usually the apps they care about most when they say IPC. But that's just not what IPC is. To get a decent IPC claim, and it's only ever really a claim, you can't just use one app like Geekbench or 3 Mark. You need to bench tons of apps at the same clocks to get a claim anyone will take seriously. And while these companies, AMD and Intel, do have early projections of what the IPC will be on any given architecture they're working on, they do basically always end up over or underperforming by a little bit, but never by some magical amount. In fact, after receiving incredible details about Zen 5 and Zen 6 this week that spurred me on to make the video you're watching, I actually first decided to reach out to a couple of contacts at both AMD and Intel for broad statements on how much, and really how often, final IPC changes from what's being reported in status updates by engineering teams. And, well, the short answer is that they always change. Uh, the first source, which is from AMD, told me that they never pay much mind to early performance claims like average IPC. And the reason is, is that it always ends up changing a bit from what this person sees. And they also told me that really they see final performance as much more than IPC. There's clock speeds and, you know, cache sizes. There's a lot more that goes into final performance in any given app than just the IPC itself. And because of that, they never really pay that much attention. Although they did want to warn me that it never is off by a factor of two. And in fact, this AMD contact gave me an example. You see, before they get down to finalizing an architecture's design and then even manufacturing early silicon to test it, they'll have a pretty good idea of the ballpark it's going to be in. It's not like they would have a projection that says, oh, we're going to hit this crazy high number, and then they make some silicon, test that, and it gets closed. Close, and then it ends up in the very final silicon doubling that IPC. If they thought it could be even remotely close to a super high number, then they would be already reporting back that it probably would hit that. Uh, in other words, to give a very specific example, if there was an architecture an AMD engineer was working on and they thought there was even a remote chance it would hit a 30% IPC increase, then they would probably report back in status updates to upper management that they're going to likely achieve at least around 20%. And if it hits 30%, maybe they'll get a bonus or something or their team will be regarded as doing good work. They would never report back at least 10% if they think it can remotely hit 30%. And you know, a contact at Intel put it another way. They said that IPC targets don't really change throughout a design process, but sometimes one defect or surprise success in a design can affect one major app disproportionately, and that the way they define IPC for marketing can change as well. And that's why the final claimed IPC that Intel or AMD marketing decides to go with at an architecture unveiling can fluctuate a bit from what early projections were, and only really a lot in specific apps if there's a really specific reason one part of a design didn't run that one app well. And now look, I opened up this video by clarifying all of that about IPC because what I'm about to show you may come off as overly pessimistic, but it is in my opinion, and to be clear, it is just my opinion, that what I'm leaking today is the minimum performance increase you should expect out of Zen 5 and Zen 6, not what I am sure it will end up being. But note that while I am making it clear that this is just my opinion of what I am interpreting today, that opinion is based on proven track records from AMD of projecting certain numbers and then overperforming them. For example, AMD projected a 40% IPC increase with Zen 1 and then told the public, and they ended up hitting 52%. And even if you spoke to people behind the scenes back then, they would have told you they didn't quite think it would hit 50%, but it did. And another example is Zen 4. Before Zen 4 launched, AMD had some slides that said around an 8% IPC increase, but recently they've been claiming a 14% IPC increase. So yeah, these things tend to change a bit, especially when it comes to AMD. AMD tends to be conservative with what they communicate in their projections so that they over 
outperform expectations. But there is a difference between being conservative and just being in another dimension, right? 40% as a projection for Zen 1 did not become something wildly different like 80%. And 8% for Zen 4 did not become 20%. It became 14%. And I say all of that right now because, well, as usual, I've seen wild IPC claims out there that are way beyond anything that is officially happening at AMD with Zen 5. And I just think it's time for this community to stop being overhyped yet again and for fake leakers to stop guessing at the specs. And if you look on screen, you don't need to guess anymore. Here it is, Nirvana or the Zen 5 core microarchitecture. There's no need to guess how much L1 or L2 cache there is. I'm showing you on screen now from official documents from within AMD. And in all honesty though, I'm not gonna spend an extraordinary amount of time on this slide. I have another one I'll spend much more time on. And I just imagine that the slide you're seeing on screen now, there are people on Twitter that will spend much more time breaking down the significance of this architecture than I'm going to bother to. But what I will say briefly, right? Right now is that based on what some people told me this week at AMD about what all of this means is Zen 4 seems like it's going to be disproportionately good at Cinebench compared to Zen 4, at least in terms of the average performance. And indeed, it should crush AVX2 and especially AVX512 workloads significantly better than Zen 4 did. And it should really do well in performance per clock and efficiency at lower clock speeds with its wider design than Zen 4. And it's probably gonna be excellent for the Zen 5 APUs coming out next year just overall in addition to of course being really great for the new server products and look it's going to bring another decently large gaming performance uplift over zen 4 it is a major architectural redesign but there's really no way around it unsurprisingly this architecture aims to fix the remaining weaknesses in zen that amd has against Intel's current offerings, and they just really want to crush it in mobile and server next year. But it is not a situation where there is a fundamental redesign of the layout. The architecture is a redesign, but if you were to physically look at this thing, it's probably going to look a lot like Zen 4, which means some of the weaknesses in Zen 4 with latency and communication between dies. Those will still be there. But again, it's going to be a massive efficiency and performance increase. Everyone I talk to is more excited about it than they were about Zen 4 overall. But it's not really until Zen 6 that I think we're going to see a fundamental shift in what Zen is really like, like what its strengths are. It's really Zen 6 that's the major packaging overhaul that we really haven't seen since Zen 1 to Zen 2. And I now want to show you slides that prove minimum IPC release dates, core count increases, and much more for both Zen 5 and Zen 6. But first, an ad from a sponsor. This piece of content is brought to you by Zima Blade. The Zima Blade is a tiny computer that you can turn into an NAS server, media player, retro console, or frankly, whatever you want it to be. First, let's talk about why you might want a personal server. You see, cloud storage is inherently limited by space constraints, security issues, and privacy limitations if it's not your cloud. But if it was your own cloud and you could afford to build it yourself, well, those issues melt away. And this is where the Zima Blade comes in with its support for 154 terabytes of storage and an incredibly low starting price of $64 for a dual core Intel x86 Apollo Lake processor. And they also offer quad core models as well and 18 Skylake execution units, which means that you could use this to make a retro console host for development work including ai if you plug in a gpu but even if you didn't plug in a gpu it's strong enough to play a game like rocket league and speaking of plugging things in it is quite modular allowing you to make this product whatever you want it to be. Per personally, I plan to either make it some sort of an old school gaming PC or test system with a GTX 583 gigabyte, or possibly just a backup server for Moore's Law's dead files. I haven't decided yet, and it's hard for me to decide because 
Well, there's so many options available. The bottom line is that the Zima Blade is an excellent single board configurable computer that starts at $64 US or 60 Euro, and you can use it for anything. Please check out their website, and if you get one, make sure that you tell them I sent you, and honestly, just clicking those links in the description helps the channel so much. Check out Zima Blade in the links below today. All right, so now it is time to get to the slide that I think you will all be far more interested in. But before I put it on screen, please don't mindlessly share it without just bearing with me for a few minutes to understand all of the context, because this is not a slide that is meant for public facing sharing. It's AMD to AMD communication. And there's a lot of things on here that I think people could misunderstand. So I want you to share it and I want you to share this video, but before you do, Bear with me with what you're seeing on screen right now. Now, the first thing that I have to clarify is that the numbers of the year, like 2020 and 2023, those are where the middle of the year is supposed to be. So when you see that 2021, that's not supposed to be the end or beginning of the year. That's supposed to be around the June to July area. Now, speaking of around... Notice that this is at an angle. This is a picture taken from a monitor, and honestly, I'm not going to say any more than that. I went through a ton of lengths to cover up and make this slide safe for sharing, including moving around the pixels and some of the colors. So just know that you shouldn't be estimating exact launch months, especially because these things are years away still. So estimating an exact month is kind of a silly thing to do. Although, oh, one more thing, actually. Remember that this is a design status update for Epic Design, right? So Cerberus or Breckenridge, those are code names for Zen 3. Zen 3 may have launched to gamers in late 2020, but actually Milan products didn't launch until early 2021. And if you go to here, yep, that is where it all lines up. Whereas on the other hand, Genoa actually did launch within the same year as the Ryzen AM5 variants, and that's why it's ending there with the design phase on this roadmap. But anyways, based on all of this, after all of that clarification, I do think it's safe to conclude that Zen 6 should launch by mid or late 2025, and that once again, it's safe to conclude that Zen 5 can launch, if AMD chooses to, in very early 2024. As I have been leaking consistently with numerous Zen 5 leaks that have actual internal slides to back them up for years now. Although there's one thing that might stand out to you as seemingly off from what I've leaked in previous videos from this channel, and that's the bloody IPC, which, well, in leaks, I've shown Cinebench scores of actual physical Zen 5 silicon that performed around 15% better than Zen 4, and generally speaking, I have been expecting an above 15% IPC increase in final claimed, underline that word, claimed averages out of AMD, but I've never seen any evidence of something being close to 30% like I know some people have been claiming out there. And in many ways, this then does back up what I have been saying. It, Zen 5 will bring a decent IPC increase, uh, but it's not going to be wild or magical. And actually, I want to put this slide back on screen to tell you why I'm still optimistic that they're being conservative with the Zen 5 and Zen 6 portions of this slide. So if you look at the Zen 4 and the Zen 3 portions, you'll see 19% and 14% IPC achieved. But the other parts of the slide do not say achieved. So I think that there's probably some really old version of this slide from years ago that instead of showing Zen 3 through Zen 6, it probably showed like Zen 1 through Zen 4, and they had like an 8% IPC estimate for Zen 4, and then they had the achieved ones of the previous gens, and then they finally updated it recently to what they actually achieved, which was 14%. And so, yeah, I think that they're going to manage to get to... Well, I guess I'd say at least 13, 14%, but I do think they are going to hit a 15% IPC increase. And I think it's possible they get over 20%. And there's a little wiggle room there for what AMD's marketing can claim. I don't think there's enough wiggle room to hit 30% or something. And really, I think Zen 6 is actually kind of vague for a reason. I think that Plus is doing a lot of work on that slide. All we can say is that Zen 6 will be double-digit IPC increase over Zen 5 and just 
leave it at that. I don't think, again, it'll be 30%, but I think it could be more than 15 but AMD just isn't sure yet. And actually, I'll get to it in a second. What I hear is that Zen 5 basically completes the arc of the Zen 2 layout of one IO die and two CCDs on an AM motherboard for Ryzen. And that Zen 6... It's a lot like Zen 2. It's the start of a new layout that drives for massive latency decreases. And, well, actually, if we put the slide on screen one more time here, it will also make use of the 3 nanometer and 2 nanometer nodes, as I at least expected. And excitedly, it looks like Zen 6C, or at least some Zen 6 variant, will go up to 32 cores per CCX, which means at least 32 cores per CCD, and in my opinion, likely means that there will be 16 core CCDs as an option on desktop for proper Zen 6 in all likelihood. And well, there's also weird things like low power core option and other little things that suggest to me there could be additional sub variants of these architectures. But anyways, let's actually put this on screen here and summarize everything new that's been leaked today. Well, also just reminding everybody of other things that have been leaked connected to this new information. So, Zen 5 is expected to most likely have a larger IPC increase than Zen 4 did over Zen 3, and there's a chance it might hit over 20% if things turn out well, but there is, to this day, no evidence of a 30% average IPC increase, and prior benchmarks leaked by this channel point to what I would say is like a 14-26% to 26 IPC increase as the lower and upper bounds. And Zen 5 has two main CCX variants, an 8-core standard variant manufactured on a TSMC 4 nanometer node, and a 16-core C variant on 3 nanometer. And Zen 5 is a major architectural redesign focused on efficiently increasing performance and crushing AVX workloads. While the Zen 5 architecture itself is a major redesign, then the overall layout has not fundamentally changed since, really since Zen 2, at least in how it looks physically from the outside. Zen 5 on AM5 can offer up to 16 cores of Zen 5 or 32 cores of Zen 5C or maybe a combination, 8 cores Zen 5 or 16 cores Zen 5C as I've recently leaked, but that's can, not will. It's up to AMD what they actually launch. And same for Zen 5 Epic that can offer up to 128 cores Zen 5, 192 cores Zen 5C most likely. And I have to say this though, schematics I've seen recently suggest that 256 cores is theoretically possible, but it doesn't seem like they're going to launch with up to that many cores with Zen 5C. I'm guessing it's because of bandwidth limitations, but I'm not entirely sure yet. And Zen 5 is set to launch in the first half of 2024, when a quarter one launch seems entirely plausible. And moving on, Zen 6 then will bring at least a 10% IPC increase over Zen 5 in general application performance. Now, keep in mind what I'm saying here at least, not around, at least 10%, and it's still early, and this is in general application performance, and they will have variants that utilize both 3 nanometer and 2 nanometer nodes with a new 32-core CCX design for one of the variants. But unlike Zen 5, Zen 6 is a total redesign of the chiplet layout that uses new packaging techniques and a new gen of infinity fabric. The architecture itself isn't as fundamentally redesigned, but because of these new packaging techniques, I'm directly told that Zen 6 sets out to achieve monolithic levels of latency and efficiency while still economically utilizing chiplets. And they think this is the one that could really take it to Intel with no real major weaknesses left on the table with Zen. And currently, Zen 6 is actually expected based on a couple people I've talked to. But notice, this is in white text, I'm not 100% sure. It does seem like Zen 6 stacks CCDs on top of IO dies and then leverages silicon bridges for ultra fast CCD to CCD communication, removing many of the weaknesses that you run into right now if one CCD, like running a game, has to access another CCD for extra threads. That shouldn't be an issue anymore with Zen 6. And I think that because of this, the general application performance is likely to, on paper, 
be lower than Zen 5 in terms of an increase. So the general application IPC increase with Zen 6 will probably be lower than Zen 5s, but because there's so much of a focus on improving latency, it would not surprise me if Zen 6 was every bit of a performance increase for games or even better than what Zen 5 offers. And Epic Venice, that is, you know, the large core count one for servers, it is expected to hit at least 256 cores on SP7, and I do think core count increases on AM5 and laptop are likely. And nope, Zen 6 is targeting a second half of 2025 launch. And so there you go. Well, Zen 5 will possibly be the biggest architectural redesign since Zen 1. Zen 1 was innovating on Excavator. Zen 5 is innovating on Zen 4. Zen 4 is a much better architecture for its time than Excavator was. So expect a pretty big IPC increase and big efficiency increases in, in some apps for Zen 5 to have a massive performance increase, but don't expect an average IPC increase that's at some mythical 30 to 50% level or whatever else other fake leakers are saying right now, because that's just not what I'm hearing is going to happen. It's not what I'm hearing this week, and it's not what any benchmarks that I previously leaked of physical Zen 5 Silicon has suggested. So I don't know where anyone would actually be getting it from that's a real source. Well, wait a second, though. What about Intel Aerolake? Is AMD screwed next year? If Zen 5 is just a 15 to 25% IPC increase, Aerolake looks to be a larger increase than that, at least from what I've heard. Well, yes, Aerolake looks very strong, but to me, it also sounds really expensive, and it's launching well after Zen 5 will already be on the market, so... Frankly, I would hope it's stronger than Zen 5 if Zen 5 is launching long before it and will cost less. And do note that AMD is going to deliver these gains I just leaked here today without consuming 350 watts like Intel already does and likely will keep doing so with their desktop flagships for the foreseeable future. And there's also still some wild cards here. Like I just talked about the generic IPC of like Zen 4 to Zen 5. Well, they're also gonna have four and three nanometer variants. And there's also gonna be Vcache that acts as kind of a wild card. What if Vcache on Zen 5 performs better than it did on Zen 4? Some of my contacts think it could. And in server and in mobile, well, it still looks like a bloodbath to Intel next year. I mean, think about it. AMD is preparing a new architecture that exceeds at low clocks and will be ready long before any next-gen Intel mobility architecture is out. From what I'm hearing, Hero Lake laptops might not be ready until 2025, and so that means Meteor Lake is what Zen 5 is going to compete with for maybe almost an entire year. And based on recent data that I have and I've leaked, it doesn't really look like a next-gen SoC to me in terms of performance. It just looks like an extra efficient current-gen SoC that's late to the race. And I just don't really see how Granite Rapids or Sierra Forest are going to beat Turin either, especially not for the cost. And so, yeah. Basically, I think AMD has server all but all sewn up next year. And in mobility, AMD seems to, at a minimum, be planning for more APU releases in 2024 and in 2025 individually than they've ever done in any year in their history. It'd be really weird if AMD was designing all of these different APUs and wasn't also buying up a ton of capacity with a lot of confidence for the architectures they will be using. And so, yeah, in conclusion, I actually do think Arrow Lake can win in desktop, especially desktop gaming, next year. But remember, when I say Arrow Lake can win next year, I mean four quarters from now. And that win will be after AMD has already been out for two to three quarters of dominance. All right, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please remember to hit the like button and subscribe to the Moore's Laws Dead YouTube channel and ring the bell button so you don't miss more Zen 5, Zen 6, Arrow Lake, Panther Lake, and Nova Lake updates that will be coming from this channel. I was actually working on a pretty comprehensive set of Intel information, DLSS 4 information, and Blackwell information until, well, I got the little push I needed for some extra info to go forward with a Zen 5 and Zen 6 update. Got a lot more coming, and you're not going to want to miss it. Please subscribe. And also consider supporting Moore's Law Z on Patreon. If you do, even just $2 a month gets you access to the Discord, the Die Shrink 
piece of content that's just bonus, like hour-long videos, sometimes with guests, sometimes with my co-host Dan, sometimes it's just me, and there's never ads, and it's only for patrons. And of course, you'll also be able to ask guest questions. Wendell from Level 1 Text will be the next guest. He's very excited to talk about all the new Intel information that's come out and this new AMD information that I've leaked today, and he's an expert on it, so you can ask him questions if you join the Patreon. But no matter what, if you made it this far, thank you for watching.